right? So try uh, one more example. If you have one iron atom, what would be the mass of one iron atom? Okay. All right. And by the way, um, so you're looking at I. That's actually the symbol for iodine. It turns out that the symbol for iron is Fe. Right. That would be here. Right. So what's the mass of one iron atom? 55.85. But what would be the units on that? Right. We need very small units because this is just one single atom. And suppose I had one mole of iron atoms, what would be their mass? 55.85 grams. Right. Okay, and that's what we usually use the periodic table for. We don't usually use the periodic table to find the mass of one thing. Because in real life, you're never just dealing with one atom. In real life, you're dealing with a bunch of moles of something. So the way we really interpret those numbers is we would look at the periodic table and we would say, oh, one mole of carbon has a mass of 12.01 grams, and one mole of iron has a mass of 55.85 grams. Or looking here at neon, one mole of neon would have a mass of 20.18 grams. Okay, so that's how we can deal with the masses of the particles. All right, so what we've learned here now is how to talk about the masses of the elements. Um, usually when you're dealing with masses, all right, so we started by saying if you were talking about individual atoms, you would talk about the masses of in atomic mass units. But in real life in chemistry, you usually have way more than just one atom, so then you want to use grams. We want to know how many grams there are in all the quadrillions and quadrillions of atoms that we have. So the convenient way to do that is to think about how many moles of atoms you have, and then you can figure out how many grams. And the periodic table gives us the information that we need. The periodic table, those are the numbers below um, the, the symbols. They tell us how many grams each thing, uh, how many grams of mass everything has for one mole of the substance. Now, uh, while we're at it then, we should also talk about charge. So we could talk about what's the charge on a proton. Uh, so um, do you remember, what's the standard unit for charge in physics? And what would be the units on that? Coulombs. Coulombs. That's right. Actually, the numerical value there is, let me erase some of this. It's actually 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 Coulombs. Negative 27 was for the mass. Okay. So it would be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. But again, this is a very tiny number. It makes sense that this is tiny because this is just one proton. Well, obviously, one proton has very little charge. By the way, is this a positive charge or a negative charge? Positive. Yeah, so it's very important to know protons are positively charged. Protons are positively charged. But this number here is too small to be useful. So again, we need a better unit. Um, so the unit that is used um, when you're talking about individual particles is uh, they're called elementary charge units, or E. We can just use the symbol E to stand for elementary charge units. Well, what's the charge of a proton in terms of E's? Well, that's defined as just being positive 1E. That's pretty much the same thing we did with AMUs. Instead of using 10 to the negative 27 kilograms, we just defined the, the mass of the proton to be 1 AMU, because that's much easier to work with. Um, well, uh, instead of uh, working with this number of coulombs, it's much easier to use unit, units of E's. And we can just define this to be have a charge of 1 E. So very often, people would just say that protons have a charge of positive 1. Protons have a positive 1 charge. And when they say that, they mean positive 1 E's. But people use that so much, they don't even have to say E. But those are the units that we're using, positive 1 E's. All right, in fact, I think, uh, all right, and this is the, the key unit that we'd be focusing on here. How about a neutron? What's the charge of a neutron? Now, actually, neutrons are neutral. They don't have, yeah, so it have zero charge. Now, what's the mass of a neutron? What is the mass of the neutron? This. 
we want to figure out what the mass of the neutron is and what the charge of the neutron is. Yeah. Yeah. What would be the units here? One atomic mass unit. This is what we talked about a few minutes ago. Protons and neutrons have approximately the same mass. So they both have a mass of approximately one atomic mass unit. Um, however, neutrons have exactly zero charge. Neutrons don't have any charge at all. That's where the name neutron comes from. It comes from the word for neutral. So neutrons are neutral. They have no charge. All right. Um, and, uh, OK. We, uh, we've been kind of assuming that all along, because we, uh, when we were trying to make sure that our, when we were figuring out the charges of cations and anions before, we ignored the neutrons. When we were figuring out the charges of cations and anions, we were only paying attention to how many protons and electrons there were. We weren't even talking about the neutrons, and the reason we could do that is that the neutrons have zero charge. Well, then logically, we should talk about electrons. So again, what should I say is the, the mass of one electron? Is zero? Yeah. Zero. Not exactly zero, but it's approximately zero atomic mass units because it's so much smaller than these. So we can approximate that as zero. What would be the charge of one electron? That's right. So what should I write down for the charge? One. Yeah. One. Positive or negative? Negative. Ah, so that's what, so it's the same numeric, it's the same in magnitude, but it's actually not the same, it's the opposite in sign, and that's very important. So this would have a charge of negative 1e, and this would have a charge of positive 1e. What does e stand for? Well, it's best to say that e stands for elementary charge units. Sometimes people say that E stands for the charge on an electron, but that's probably not a good way to think about it because it's also the charge on a proton. So rather than thinking of E as being the, um, the charge of an electron, it's better just to think of it as meaning elementary charge units. Positive 1E is the charge on a proton, and negative 1E is the charge on an electron. And those are both uh, exact because E was chosen, so this would come out to be uh, an, e, uh, a, uh, an exact number. We were actually kind of using that before. So remember, let's go back to carbon for a second. How many protons does carbon have? Four? Four. No, just... Oh, did I take your table from you? Sorry. 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 That bent. Here's another parity table. How many protons does carbon have? Six. Right. Oh, is that right? Yes, six. Because its atomic number is six. So let's say I have a carbon with six protons and five electrons, what would its charge be? Uh, yeah. We already said that a, a few minutes ago. We'd already said that this would be the charge. But now we can see that what we really meant is it would have a charge of positive one E. It would have a charge of positive one elementary charge units. So we were assuming that each of these had a charge of plus one and each of these had a charge of negative one. So that um, so this would be positive 6e plus negative 5e, which would come out to be positive 1e. That's how we could work out that the charge on this would be positive 1e. Okay.
Uh, most of the time, though, almost all of the time in chemistry, we're almost always using E, not coulombs for charge. So we don't need to say that all the time. So usually people don't say positive 1E. They just say this is a charge of positive 1. So I'll go back to that. So we would say this has a charge of positive 1. If you lose an electron, that gives you a charge of positive 1. And if you gain an electron, that gives you a charge of negative 1. Okay, so here's the key points that we need to know about the things that make up uh, the atom. We need to know that um, what the masses are. These have masses of uh, one atomic mass unit, and this has almost zero mass. And we need to know the charges. Uh, protons and electrons have charges that are equal uh, plus 1e and negative 1e, and the neutron has no charge. <laughs>